Good afternoon, everybody. A uh, lovely day here in Gala Shields. Um, as you can see, I'm ready for my uh, live chat this evening with uh, none other than uh, the, uh, <laughs> the rider behind me there, who is looking the right way, not the one that's looking behind him, wondering where he's gone. Um, anyway, more of that. If you, if you want to join in later on, that'll be great. But we really need to crack on with the next part of the OLR decision in the case of Ken Rapist Kratz. And we stopped the first section and we were just about to go to item 35, which is really interesting. Because he said that in his post hearing brief, attorney Kratz argued that a public reprimand was warranted in support of his argument that a license suspension was not warranted. Attorney Kratz downplayed the seriousness of his misconduct towards Stephanie Van Grohl and the other two victims. Regarding his texts to Stephanie, Attorney Kratz admitted, admitted they constituted wrongful behaviour, but disagreed with the OLR's characterization that the messages contained sexual overtones as no message included one single sexually explicit term, nor was any sexual conduct or sex act ever suggested. Attorney Kratz also described his conduct upon learning that, that Stephanie objected to his text as praiseworthy. He wrote, upon even the hint of a conflict of interest, or reports of unsettling reaction by Stephanie. Immediate steps were taken to eliminate even the perception of continued violation. Timely self-report to the OLR for imposition of sanction if required and aggressive steps to assure this. Let's go back up to the top of the page. Back down a page. And down another page. <laughs> stupidity never ever repeated itself that is the attorney response that discourse should praise rather than punish regarding his verbal comments to social worker ss that he won't come in her mouth and look forward to having big booed women serve him drinks attorney kratz wrote that he recognized the disrespectful phrase used and apologized to the social worker at the first opportunity. Regarding his statement to social worker RH that a reporter had big, beautiful breasts, according to Tony Kratz wrote in his post hearing brief that this comment never occurred. Attorney Kratz argued that the reporter referred to, although admittedly beautiful, does not have large breasts. <laughs> this single important factor has been relied upon by respondent to conclude the comment never was made, or at the very least misrepresented by RH. Attorney Kratz conceded, however, that given the posture of this case, the tribu tribunal is free to include the facts of the RH comment and provide it such weight in the sanctions recommendations as deemed necessary. What kind of reporter attorney Kratz was, ref was referencing was the source of some confusion in the proceedings before the referee. In its complaint, the OLR referred to the reporter as a court reporter three weeks before the disciplinary hearing. The OLR moved to amend its complaint to refer to a reporter as opposed to a court reporter. The referee granted the OLR's motion to amend. In his post-hearing brief, attorney Kratz described the reporter in question as a TV reporter. Now, as a mitigating factor, attorney Kratz wrote in his post-hearing brief that at the time of the events in question, he suffered from the combination of sexually compulsive disorder and prescription drug, drug dependence, conditions for which he has sought treatment. E. also claimed that he wanted to 
settle the case early in the disciplinary process, but the OLR refused to do so, in part because it is apparently more concerned with how they look in the zealous pursuit of an attorney pelt rather than what result should be reached. On July 30th, 2012, the referee filed a report and recommendation in considering the appropriate discipline. The referee weighed various aggravating and mitigating factors. The referee noted as aggravating factors that attorney Kratz acted with a selfish motive, that Stephanie was a vulnerable victim and that attorney Kratz's misconduct was particularly inexcusable in light of his considerable legal experience and his previous leadership on issues pertaining to victims' rights. The referee assigned neutral weight to attorney Kratz's self-report to the OLR of his misconduct involving Stephanie. The referee wrote that at the time of the respondent's self-report, the cat was already out of the bag, so to speak. Stephanie had gone to the police, the police had contacted the Wisconsin Department of Justice, and that agency urged the respondents to respondent to self-report to the OLR. The, OL, the referee found that these circumstances significantly undercut any claim of virtuousness by self-reporting. The referee noted a variety of mitigating factors, which in summary fashion are as follows. Kratz has no prior disciplinary history. He apologized to SS for his vulgar comment shortly after making it. He has never attempted to justify or defend his conduct towards SGV. He cooperated with the disciplinary proceedings. He previously enjoyed a good professional reputation and engaged in significant volunteer activities within the legal profession. He has been diagnosed with and sought treatment for narcissistic personality disorder and sexual addiction. He was abusing the sleeping aid Ambien, the painkiller Vicodin, and the anti-anxiety drug Xanax at the time of the misconduct. Let's come down. He subsequently sought treatment for his substance abuse issues. He voluntarily obtained a mentor attorney through the State's Bar Wisconsin Lawyer Assistance Program, who reported being impressed with attorney Kratz's character and commitment to recovery, and he had suffered substantial collateral consequences from his misconduct, including considerable negative publicity. Oh, dear. The loss of his district attorney position. Oh, dear dear, get the violins out, and significant financial difficulties. Yeah, perhaps you buried two people alive. After weighing these aggravating, these aggravating and mitigating factors, the referee recommended that Kratz's license to practice law should be suspended for four months. In support of his recommendation for a lighter sanction than that proposed by the OLR, the referee emphasized the number and weight of the mitigating factors in this case. The referee also suggested that a four month suspension was consistent with the discipline imposed in two cases that he believed were particularly analogous to this case. Uh, assistant district attorney publicly reprimanded for having spent numerous hours viewing pornography on his work computer, lied about the source of the pornography and the extent of his viewing, used the state's email system to send and receive sexually explicit email messages, and made inappropriate comments to a county employee in a work environment. Uh, in another case, assistant state public defender suspended for six months for having initiated and engaged in sexual contact with a client he was representing as a public defender and for having encouraged that client to violate the terms of her probation by providing her with alcoholic beverages. No appeal has been filed, so this matter is submitted to the court pursuant to uh, Regulation 2217. We affirm a referee's, referee's finding of fact unless they are found to be cl clearly erroneous. Right. 
We review the referee's conclusions of law on a de novo basis. We determine the appropriate level of discipline given the particular facts of each case, independent of the referee's recommendation, but benefiting from it. State regulation states as follows. If no appeal is filed timely, the Supreme Court shall review the referee's report, adopt, reject, or modify the referee's findings and conclusions, or remand the matter to the referee for additional findings and determine and impose appropriate discipline. The court on its own motion may order the parties to file briefs in the matter. Now, after reviewing the record, we conclude that the referee's factual findings are supported by the record and we adopt them. We also adopt the referee's conclusion that attorney Kratz committed the six counts of misconduct described above. With the respect to the appropriate level of discipline, we agree with the referee that a four month suspension is necessary discipline for attorney Kratz's misconduct in this matter. Attorney Kratz's conduct towards Stephanie was appalling. Through a series of wheel dealing, text messages, Attorney Kratz attempted to convince Stephanie, a domestic abuse crime victim and witness, to enter into a sexual relationship with him while he was prosecuting the perpetrator of the domestic crime. Stephanie felt leveraged by Kratz's sexual entreties. She feared that if she failed to respond to him, he might take action in her domestic abuse case that could potentially adversely affect her. This was exploitative behavior, harassing behavior, and a crass, I like that word, crass placement of his personal interests above those of his client. The state of Wisconsin, attorney Kratz's comments to social worker SS while he served as a witness in one of his cases, while she served as a witness in one of his cases, on up to the top no, that's made it wrong. No, it must be next one of his cases. Let's go back up. that he won't come in her mouth and, for, and look forward to Big Boo women serving him drinks in Las Vegas, crossed the line separating the unprofessional from the acutely offensive and harassing. Attorney Kratz's statement to social worker RH during a court proceeding in which he voiced approval of a reporter's big, beautiful breasts was sufficiently boorish as to constitute misconduct. In short, whatever his qualities and accomplishments as a lawyer, Attorney Kratz proved himself during the period in question to be sanctionably sophomoric. Now, Attorney Kratz has rationalised his poor behaviour by confessing to various addictions, to Ambien, to Vicodin, to Xanax and to sex, though he fails to point to either medical records or expert medical testimony that would explain the exact nature and severity of his conditions or how they may have affected his ability to conform his behavior to ethical rules. But regardless of how we view attorney Kratz's behavior as an involuntary byproduct of addiction or as a willful blindness to professional standards, the ugly picture painted by the record remains the same. The recommended four month suspension is deserved. We note that the referee additionally recommended that Kratz's license to practice law in this state should be conditioned on his continued participation in the monitoring program. We further note that in April 2014, the coordinator wrote to advise the court that Kratz had successfully competed, completed a two year voluntary monitor, monitoring contract. In light of attorney Kratz's successful completion of his monitoring contract, we declined to order continued monitoring. 
I think that would be again another good point to to stop. But I really do like this. The, the he fails to point to either medical records or expert medical testimony that would explain the, the exact nature and severity of his conditions or how they may have affected his ability to conform his behavior to ethical rules. He can say that he's taken these drugs. How can he prove it? How can he prove that he was taking these drugs? You know, he's proven, yes, that he has this um, addiction to wanting to uh, make women who are very, very vulnerable, very subservient. Yes, we get that. That's, you know, that, that's typical of a sexual predator. Anyway, um, I, th I, think, I think I've read enough about Ken Kratz. It, it just gets me annoyed uh, every time I read the, the, the rubbish that, that, he's, that he's put out there, you know telling everybody that he's uh, he's self-reported and he's done everything he can, realizing the seriousness of the situation. BS. But I'm going to go and uh, I'm sorry if you heard the dogs barking upstairs. Well, one of them in particular, she does like the sound of her own voice. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Catch you all again soon. Take care. Bye for now.